And we are back. Brian Broaddus is here. I'm not going to ask how he's doing. I'm sure he's doing all right. I'm, I'm doing, doing all right. I'm doing all right. Appreciate y'all. Hope y'all are doing just fine as well. The Cowboys play some football, man. The Cowboys play some football and we have many takeaways. And you know, Brian, I don't want to jump right into, you know, Trey Lance and all that. Cause I feel like, <laughs> I feel like that's what everybody's doing. I will, yeah. I will say this though. Something I brought back up a, a couple of weeks ago. We're not talking about Trey Lance, Brian. Okay. We're not talking about Trey Lance. All right. But I did say. What are we talking about then? You're going to ask me a Trey Lance question. I'm not going to ask you a Trey Lance question. But I did say, damn, dog, I wonder what Will Greer's doing. Because I know because <laughs> I know what a Will Greer preseason game will look like. <laughs> now I see what. I'm not talking about Trey Lance. But now I see what a Trey Lance game is like. I'm like, damn, I wonder if we can get Will Greer real fast. Listen, man, I don't want to yeah. do that, Brian. I want to talk about some, some real can stuff. It, please. Can I ask you a question then? Por favor, please. Educate me then. Go on. Educate me a little bit on. And, and I'm just always curious about. You know, I have an idea what I saw, and I know a lot of people have asked me about that. And it's funny that you and I are talking about it now. But I love the way you ask questions. I really, really do. Tell me, tell me what you're thinking. Just your first thought coming out of this after uh, game one about the quarterback or just the whole team. Quarterback. So, um. Trey hasn't played a bunch of football, right? But I can't use that as an excuse because he's here, right? The fact that he's here, like yeah. th that'll be a good reason to not draft him. Right. right. But he's here. Will Greer got cut after a great 300 yard preseason game. Trey Lance is here. So, you know, I can understand all this talk about, well, you know, he needs more reps. He needs more right. playing time. Hey, mm -hmm. man, you about to run out of reps because week one is here and four is about to get all that unless it's an emergency. We don't right. have reps to give Trey Lance, right? Right, right. I can dig what Parcells is saying, right? Hey, man, I need you to play at least 3,000 snaps before I even look at you. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. all this makes a little bit more sense now. So when I watch Trey Lance, you know how, like, high school wide open is this much? Yeah. And college wide open is that much, but right. pro wide open is this much. Yeah. Trey is at high school wide open right now. Right. Yeah. So I do feel like he has a great feel for the pocket and I feel like he has great athleticism and I do feel like he has great arm talent, but yeah. with this offense, your window is this big. It is. And this offense doesn't give you a lot of wiggle room in terms of missing reads. If, yeah. if, if, if he was an Eagle and he miss a read, he can run or there would be a wide open dude in the flats for whatever reason. That was because that's what they do with their offense. Right. Right. But in this one, if you miss a guy, you quickly have to find another guy. Yeah. And the next guy, and the next guy, and the next guy. So what yeah. happened with Trey Lance is he'll see it, but he won't pull the trigger. Just a tick slow. Yeah. But here, one tick slow is an interception or an overthrow. So what happens is he turns into dump off guy. He'll throw the ball to the running back. He'll throw the ball to the tight ends. He'll throw the ball to the sideline and he'll run. And that's what I think Trey Lance is dealing with. He's dealing with his clock not being fast enough right now. Man, I think you got the guy nailed. The thing that I would add to that, I don't know if he particularly sees the field all that well. Sure. And I don't know if he really trusts what he's seeing. I don't, and there's, you know, he was, there were some struggles down in the red zone. He's had struggles in the red zone before. I think he was two of eight down in the red zone. You know, it wasn't good. Um, but there's things that when you watch the game, he missed some throws because he didn't see guys. Yeah. And I guarantee you, Dallas puts 14 points up on the board with him at quarterback just to some throws that he could have made. I think there were three times I, I counted they would have been touchdowns. You know, you, you could say what you want about the 50-50 ball with the fade. I've seen him, Dak, Cooper Rush, all throw that ball, have success. Uh, he missed it. But there were some other throws where he didn't see Cropper up the scene. He didn't see. And I, and I thought, man, there was a shot that, that he could have taken to Fant mm. and Fant was, I mean, it's almost like Mike set the play up like, okay, we're going to, we're going to run this wheel 
We're going to run a wheel with the with Fant, and we're going to run an in breaking route, and then we're going to take we're going to take Pete and run him out of the backfield to the to the sideline. So it was like they got the safety to run with Pete, and then it and then it it turned out that he never even looked that way. The ball went back the other way, and I should have written it down for you when I saw it of where it is, because I know you're really good at pulling clips and all these things. But there was, it was, man, it, it, it had touchdown written all over it. And it's almost like Mike McCarthy called it knowing what he was going to get. And it was executed well, other than the quarterback not seeing, seeing the route develop. And, you know, Pete, you know, I mean, excuse me, Fant was playing like as a wing and he like arc releases. And now you've got a route inside route. You've got a wheel route or an arc release route. And you got back to the flat, which completely draws the safety. And Fant's wide open. And that ball goes somewhere else. Yeah. And if he just, if he sees it, or maybe gives it a chance that because the combination of the routes was really good. I mean, it, 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 they got exactly what they wanted out of it. And that's what made me believe that like McCarthy called this play, but it didn't, it didn't materialize that way. So uh, disappointing yeah. that he left some potential points there on the, on the, on the field. Brian, you know, I know that this Trey Lance thing, it's an experiment, you know, and we have to, you know, get him reps and get him reps. And, you know, maybe, you know, like Jordan Love, maybe when he's 28 years old, he'll finally be ready to go and, you know, he'll be the guy here. But let me ask you this, though, Brian. If I says this, mm -hmm. the running backs didn't get a bunch of carries this game. Like each no. running back, like, like you know, I, I think Davis got like eight, but like some of the yeah. other guys got like two carries, one carry. Mm. We didn't learn anything from Nate Pete. We didn't learn anything from uh, mm. Connor. You know what I mean? Like we didn't right. learn anything from any of these guys. And I wonder if, if that's because we're so gung-ho on like seeing what we have in Trey that we're going to throw the ball 40 times with him, right? And I feel like maybe a run game would have maybe helped him a little bit, you know? But if Trey's going to go out there and throw the ball 40 times, like all the pressure's on him, and we're not really getting a good look from running backs and really not receivers neither. I know Racy can't have two drops. I know Florinoy had a drop in. But also, too, though, Brian, I feel like this. With the wide receiver drops, I just kind of thought about this. I feel like they they had to jump a lot, you know. They had to leave yeah. their feet a bunch. Yeah. They had to make these super dynamic catches just to make a routine catch, you know. Like right. like you know, I I think Trey's kind of bringing the offense down a bit, and I, you know I'm not suggesting that you got to go find some new young quarterback and try to fix him because you still Trey's on for that money, right? And if Trey mm -hmm. was making thirty eight dollars or something. Mm -hmm. On some bottom bottom level contract, maybe this is a different conversation. You would just roll with Rush, but he's making some big money, man, and he mm -hmm. out here throwing for three yards, three yards per per pass attempt. You know what I'm saying? And, and yeah. it, it, it just seems like the Trey Lance experiment in this attempt to get him so many reps. It seems like it's bringing a lot of other guys down on this team that's that's fighting for their life right now. Yeah, I think that's fair to say because. Um, to me, the way they started running that football in that game, it was – they really helped their offensive line with some of the, the the blocking schemes that they used, the pull schemes, the down-downs and arounds, and, you know, trying to they, – they popped a couple of runs. Uh, they, they, they really did a good job of, of trying to help their guys to – but they didn't do it nearly enough. I think Dallas could have had some success running the football mm -hmm. with – it, just the plays that Mike, you know, and then hell, it looked like he had a, uh, his, his play call sheet was huge. <laughs> I yeah. mean, and you know, and you're wondering, gosh, he's going to call is really all these plays going in. I mean, here's Zimmer on the other side. He's not using a play sheet at all, but you're wondering, you're wondering if Mike really was going in with all those plays, but I would have liked to have seen them, play with some physicality. I know my mom hates when I say that word. She's going to kill me when I say it. Mm. Uh, but 
they I thought that they were going to be able to play a little bit more physical in the run game and kind of establish something. And what I was worried about were three and outs. Yeah. You know, a lot of three and outs in a row, and all of a sudden you're you know, your your defense is just wore down and they're not stopping anybody, you're not getting any evaluation. But he he did. He he made it a point to say, okay, I'm going to throw the ball on these guys. Now, maybe things will be different against the Raiders. We'll see. You know, the Raiders might be a little bit better. I, I know that I when we interviewed JB Long, the play by play guy for the Rams, because I asked him because Thursday we felt like the Cowboys ran the ball pretty well against against the Rams. Sure. And I asked JB Long, I said, Are you guys any good on run defense? At, you know, in trying to kind of figure that out, but they didn't do it. Maybe Mike thought, well, hey, you know, after seeing them on Thursday, maybe he felt like throwing the ball and Trey Lance throwing it a ton, you know, would be a much better evaluation than whether he wanted to see uh, if Awesome Richards and BB and Ball and those guys and, you know, uh, you know Span Ford could have some running game stuff. Yeah. Uh, I think it was this one, Brian. I was just kind of, sk- I was just kind of skimming. It. I was just kind of skimming it. through. I was just kind of skimming through, and I was like, "Is this the one?" And, I, it. and I just see Fant up here, and I'm like, "Ugh." I was okay, like, Ugh. tell me about now. Th- think about, look at that. that it's yeah. almost like they designed that. Sure. Like they, they like they said, "We're gonna call this. We're gonna call this just outside the red zone because we think we can we can pull it off." And look at look at look at the look at Fant. I mean, he just. Oh man! And Trey, Trey just never—he just doesn't even. It's like, whoa! You can throw it down inside, and Brian. I mean, you got a touchdown up top. And so, look, this is my point. Thank you for thank you for finding it for me. Fant, I appreciate it. Fant needed that catch, Brian. Fant oh. needed that touchdown. Look, Trey Lance did too. But yeah. f- this tight end room, to where we feel like we can't really trust anybody. Yeah. Fant badly wanted to be a guy that goes, hey, man, I can be a explosive weapon in this tight end passing game, but the world may never know, Brian Bros. That's, that's, that's the crazy <laughs> thank part. You, thank you for finding that because, yeah. as you can see, yeah, they missed a touchdown there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's tough, though. But, um, Brian, and it, it was, you know, I was watching the offensive line stuff, and that's, that's really where I get busy and where I have a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. And I feel like they were really good in the run game, and I feel like it was tough to fully evaluate the passing game, right? Because you would have to account for the idea, that, okay, well, maybe the ball is being held a little longer. And, look, I'm not mm-hmm. just here to poo-poo on Lance. I'm just here to say what happened. You know what I mean? Yeah. There, was, there, were, there were many times to where – um um, Bostic will have a good first three seconds. Yeah, he had nine pressures in that game. I know, like, but but look, <laughs> the first three seconds. I wonder where those nine pressures came from, Brian. Is it because it started off cool, but it ended up bad? Did he just straight oh, up get whooped? Um, a, yeah, there, he, you know what? It's funny, but sure. him and well, let's go and those guys. They it's kind of crazy how they start off kind of bad. Yeah, and then they get wore down, and so do the dudes they're playing against. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they all they all just get tired they together. Get tired Ain't nobody of- in damn shape, Brian. Um, yeah. even if you look at at Guyton, as I was watching his film, Brian, he yeah. he he was a little huffy and puffy afterwards. But I tell you what, man, I tell you what, I'm having to yeah. constantly reevaluate uh offensive lineman, man, because you know, I'm not here for the project guy or the need a bunch of work guy. But I yeah. will say this about Guyton, though, Brian. I, I will just say this about Guyton. Maybe I misunderstood, you know, with all of his lack of clean technique, I'll say. Mm-hmm. Uh, something that can save you every time is length and athleticism. Man, look at the very first play that if you could go to the very first play see, that he's in. Let's see, 12. Let's see, let's see. If you, okay, if that's you, teams right there, so it's, yeah. it's got to be here. Yeah, uh, let's okay. see what he does. Uh, okay, right, so, sorry, okay, watch yeah, this. Yeah, okay, yeah, go okay. back. There you go. And stop it right, right there. He leans okay, a little bit. Right he leans, there. yeah. Look at that. There's right there That's the guy. example of what length and athletic ability can do for you. Because right now, he's dead. Yeah. He is dead. He is, you know, he's very fortunate that Van Volkenberg. What, is that, what a name is? Van Volkenberg. Dang. Van Volkenberg, I think is how you say his name. Jeez. 
Van Volkenberg, very fortunate that he doesn't pull him out of his shoes right now. Yeah. And he doesn't, but look what happens. He gets head down, but he, re, he, re, he recovers. Okay, he's bad. Oh, right there. He's Ugh, dead. Hands he's bad, dead. leaning, he's dead. base he's is bad. Completely dead. Yeah. Completely dead. And watch him recover to recover. make sure that, you know. Yeah. See, that's that right there. That's mom and dad. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's just, you know, when you get in trouble, but you you just you find ways to get out of trouble. And sure. not that you always want to do it, but next time he's gonna know, like, okay, I can't lean this, I can't overextend. Yeah. I got to make sure that I bend my knees and set and do those things. So, uh, but I, I thought, I thought the plays that he had the opportunity for him, not practicing really all week. Mm-hmm. That was pretty good showing on his part. Brian, even on this play, I talked about this with my audience already. You see him like overset his landmark a little bit. Uh, right. Van, Van Giggleberg is coming in. He, yeah. uh, he, he, he kind of oversets his, his landmark a little bit. He recovers, gets back inside. <laughs> right. And then, and then he lands him perfectly. Still gets the, and Van Winkle belly still gets to the back hip of him. And he could just, he could yeah. just survive, Brian. He could just live. Yeah. And I'm just like, man, if he if he didn't have arm length and if he didn't have athletic ability, he yeah. loses these reps, man. And maybe yeah. that's that's something I didn't really think about and consider. Um, and and you know he did a lot of work. Duke put in a lot of work with him. Yeah, and, he sure did. And they have come a long way since Oklahoma. But man, the dude's athleticism saves him. It ain't it ain't always gonna look pretty, Brian. It's yeah. it's 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 not gonna be this Tyron Smith clinic of technique. Get some good push to the inside. Well, look at that right there look at you know how many times have we seen tyrant smith get beat inside yeah and not adjust and that's right there that's like you know that's that's okay now you're giving up the edge okay run just yeah. take off that that's that's terrible right there by the the edge yeah but his ability to to cut uh to cut the defender off inside and then kind of wheel on him to give lance the opportunity there th- i'm just going to be if he starts which i think he will because the toe injury, we'll see. I, I got it on the way on the way out of here tonight. I got to find out mm-hmm. what that MRI was for uh, for a doga. doga. And I, nobody's reported it yet, have they? No. Um, I just think it's over for a doga anyway. I think if, yeah. if if you're in this kind of competition and we're already leaning guiding anyway, he's first round pick. Then you get hurt. I think. I don't think. I don't think Chuma gets his job back at all. Like certain guys just can't get hurt. Like Brock Hoffman's a guy that just can't get hurt right now. You know what I'm saying? I think BB yeah. has some really some really good film here. And you know, just 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 some of these guys, right? Some of these guys just can't afford to keep missing. T- like Peyton Hendershot, was he hurt or something? Is he is he hurt? Yeah, I uh, he'd been a little nicked up, but he he'd been practicing. Do you think they gave him a because they had all these tight ends? That they might have gave him <laughs> veteran day, Brian. Who the hell giving Peyton Hen a shot a day off? I just said giving him a veteran day. Okay, I see you. Who the but, hell giving Peyton Hen a shot a day yeah, off like his job secured or something? No, sir. Hen shot must be hurt. Yeah, I need to I need to check on that, but I'm checking right now on uh, okay. See if we can break any news on Adoga here. I think okay. um, Tyler Guyton. I think BB uh, Hoffman was was fine. I think Awesome Richards, Josh Ball was good in the run game. Um, yeah, I think. I think your offensive line played well enough to give the rest of your team a look. I don't, I, I don't think any of the issues here were like offensive line related, you know? No. Yeah. I, uh, let me think about this line a couple of times. You're right about some of the run stuff. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Richards felt like overall was pretty good. There was one time in the running game where uh, he has a chance for a reach block to his left mm-hmm. And he just did not get his head across, and all of a sudden you see the defenders up the field, and it's a yeah. tackle for loss or no gain or something like that. But there was there was for the most part, I felt like that these guys kind of held their own. Yeah, uh, it's it's never going to be pretty with these guys. I, you know, it's kind of funny. I found myself watching Bass quite a bit. Yeah, because I don't know if Bass is as good as he was last year. He's not, Brian. He's not. And I'll tell you why. I don't think it's Bass isn't as good as he was last year, but our perception of Bass has changed now. That's just how life works. Yeah. When you're a undrafted rookie 
and you playing better than some of the draft picks, we go, oh, damn, TJ Bass didn't yeah. get us killed. He didn't get us killed versus the, the Cardinals or whatever, right? Yeah, but true. when you're an older player, you're a veteran player, and now we go, all right, what are you now? We need right. you to take the next step. In real life, TJ Bass is what he was last year. I think Brock Hoffman may be a little better, but he's basically yeah. what he was last year. But our 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 ideas of these guys have have changed now. So when we look at TJ Bass, we don't look at him as a guy that, oh, well, he may have to help out twice a year or something. Right. We right. look at he's Bass. He's got a starter. He's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we he, look at Bass yeah, yeah. when when Zach he, Martin is gone. Yeah. When Zach yeah. Martin is gone, who's playing right guard? And right. when I see Bass play, I don't see the next right guard in him, you know? that That is a really good point because then all of a sudden it turns into, okay, what if Hoffman turns into – that he is better than Biotish, you know, slightly better than now. What are you going to do when BB. Martin says, yeah, BB all of a sudden turns into the right guard. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's so, how I feel. But yeah. just, just watching Bass, I think Bass, Bass had a, had a couple of good reps, him and Hoffman it combo. Did. They combo yeah. got some guys on the ground, yeah. but I think yeah. it was a bunch of flopping around, man. It was a bunch of just flipping and tripping all over people, man. And, uh, and I, I I could be biased, uh, brought us, but I just think BB had a much better day as far as the interior guys. I yeah. think I think BB yeah. had a had a much. Well, he better missed day. that. He missed the block back. He had the one. I and I think and I don't want to give. I don't want to. I don't want to you know, put him out there and hang him out there to dry. But they had a deal where they were trying to pull and usually block. Usually the center's responsibility is to block back. He mm -hmm. went straight up. Yeah, they went down down. He they they went they were going down down. He, they went down. He went straight. They got the puller, and then the uh, the defender that was a pain in the ass from Clemson uh, was in our in our backfield. Uh, Tyler Davis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, God dang. Yeah. If 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 Mozzie played like Tyler Davis, we would we'd all be throwing a party right now. Celebrate. But he he's he's. You know, that's I, I just think he maybe an assignment error. I, I don't want to blame him, but usually when it's down, down, it's down and then around. Yeah. Uh, maybe that uh, maybe just a little bit of, of, a, of a mix up there. Yeah. I'm not going to find that play because I'm biased and I don't want to say nothing bad about Cooper BB. But I think for the most part, watching him at center, he was helping. He was did a good job of helping when he and the one on one stuff he had to do. 50% of the time he was one on one. And mm -hmm. I felt like that he he more than held his own. Brian, let me ask you this. Um, if you're in charge and your name is Jones, right? How do you account for getting guys work, but wanting to see them versus better competition? You know, like, you know, BB was, he was in the third and fourth quarter and all that. Yeah. Hoff, you know, Hoffman went out there first. I get it. But at what point do you say, all right, I need to see this player versus some better competition because Tyler, uh, like Mazia go out there and whoop all the third team yeah. guys, you know, yeah. Guyton, Guyton smoked all them kids in the second half. I want to see Guyton towards the front part of the game so I can right. see what he's like versus better talent. If your last name is Jones, how do you, how do you balance getting your, your senior guys reps and getting your young guys versus better talent? That's a really good question. You know, and we got a schedule update from the Cowboys and all of a sudden there's a joint practice here on Wednesday against the Rams. Again. Yep. And you're kind of like going, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. We went from coach, not wanting to ever practice with anybody <laughs> to, to bring the like, same team back next week, Brian. Why is that? This is like this is like Major League Baseball. This is a three game set against the Rams. Because because Trey Lance need reps. Trey Lance need reps. Coach. You know what? They it might be two. They these guys they play their ones. Dallas plays their ones. You know it gets it gets guys work. Yeah. It without without. I think that maybe Sean McVay might be onto something. This will be the. Geez, this will be the third team that he's well Dallas twice, yeah, and then the Chargers once, but he's he's had training camp and he's worked against he'll be working against three te three teams, yeah, you know he and but what does he do? He doesn't play anybody in the preseason, yeah, so he gets his work, controlled work, yeah, with you know hey don't hit my quarterback, sure. don't take a run at my wide receiver, uh uh, uh you know uh, Cooper Cup. You know, tag him off. Sure. Don't don't hit my running back. You know, he he gets work. Hmm. That's how he does it. He he they script seventy plays and boom, here we go. So, I I 
hey, I, I love getting to watch another day against the, you know, even though it's the Rams, sure. I kind of have an idea about him now. So I'm cool. I'm cool with that. But to your question, it's you you have to make it a point. You have to make it a point that one of these preseason games, you're going to just go with you're going to go with backups to the with the offensive line. Sure. That Hoffman's not going to start this game. Yeah. You know, man, and, and it's going to be BB and Shipley and or Shipley and those guys yeah. is what it's going to be. Yeah. Man, Brian, I was looking at some. I was just looking at the reps up there, man. I was like, "Damn, boy, none of the none of the starters out there for real." For I mean, you know, Hoffman's out there, but he got to be out there because I said so, right? Right. But I'm also looking out there, and I'm like, "Man, why Rico Dowdle out there getting some carries out there well, first, Brian? You know, Zeke didn't get any carries or anything like that. Why? Why you think Rico went out there? Is Rico not the the best guy in the backfield anymore. He, you just felt like he wanted to just get his, you know, get his, uh, get his feet wet a little bit. Why, why the hell we saw Rico at all when we yeah. didn't see anybody else? M- McCarthy just had to show us that you hand him the ball on a, on a trap block and you're going to get nine yards with this guy. So he, he looks you know. slick. He looked, he looked slick for a couple of plays, man. He did. He absolutely did. So, you know, and good for him. Yeah. I'll say this and I want to ask your opinion. Uh, Brian says this. Hmm. Brian asked this. Yes, sir. We're hearing a lot about Malik Davis. Are they really going to sell us Malik Davis as the third running back on this team? It sounds like to me, this is very Brock Hoffman like. Yeah. Oh, yeah, this Malik Davis getting a lot of work. Malik Davis doing a good job. Malik, not that Malik Davis is not a talented player. Sure. Are they getting us ready for a running back room of Zeke, Dowdle, Davis, and Hunter Lipke? They bet not because then they'll be getting worse on purpose, Brian. And, and I feel like they can sell us on a lot of things because, let's just be fair, they can say they like anybody. Oh, oh they're saying it, – it, it reminds me so much of how – remember we kept talking about, you know, BB, 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 and they kept saying – Brock Hoffman's a pretty good player. We like Brock Hoffman a lot. I'm getting that same vibe. Like they're they're kind of planting the seeds for Malik Davis being the, the third back here. Brian, you know how a couple of drafts ago, uh, when the Patriots drafted um uh, the uh, center, Cole, Cole Strange or whatever. Cole Strange, yeah. Everybody was confused but the Patriots, and they were still high five. Yeah, we love Cole Strange. Yeah. I think you just love all your players. Next time somebody say to you, Brian, they say, man, Brian, let me tell you something, man. We love Brock Hoffman. This is what I want you to do, Brian. I say, oh, man, that's dope. How much do you love Josh Ball? Yeah. How much you love Matt Walesco? And I think they'll tell you, oh, yeah, we love, oh, man, Matt Walesco work hard, man. He be having asthma and, and oxygen. He be need, and IVs and shit, but he still come in there and work hard. I think they'll have something good to say about any, they love Joe Looney. Yeah. But if it came down to Joe Looney versus a better dude, continuity yeah. goes out the window, right? Yeah. So I do think they like Malik Davis. And Brian, to, to your point, it's proof that they like Malik Davis because his ass is still here. He's been here for like yeah. what, three three years, four years? Yeah. He's a constant bring back on practice squad guy. So I'm yeah. sure they love Malik Davis. Mm-hmm. But that ain't what this is about. Yeah. This is about Malik Davis versus, versus Zeke. Malik Davis versus Dowdle, Malik Davis versus Vaughn, yeah. you know, so on and so forth. And Malik Davis versus somebody with the Eagles and the Dolphins sure. and Tampa Bay Buccaneers, too. And, and, Brian, to your point, I do find it odd. Malik Davis got all them carries, man. He was the only one that got eight carries, Brian. Everybody I'm else got eight like I'm telling you, I mean, hey, I – you know, I was I was born after uh, the uh, JFK assassination. Mm. There's all kinds of conspiracy from my hometown of Dallas, mm. but I'm getting a conspiracy theory of I think they're setting us up for Malik Davis being on this football team. I think they like uh, uh, Royce Freeman, uh, not not Royce 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 Freeman, or is it uh, Ronald Jones? Royce Freeman, Ronald Jones, not Ronald. He ain't here no more. Look, th- <laughs> look, they they uh, they you got Elliot Dowdle Freeman. Connor, Snoop Connor, Snoop Connor, Malik Davis, Nathaniel Pete, Hunter Lipke, and Deuce Vaughn. I think they really like Royce. I think they paid money for Zeke and they don't want to 
make themselves look crazy. And I think Rico Dowdle just happens to be the best guy. I don't know. I what, think Rico Dowdle's the best one too. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't see where now Malik is another. Hey, cut him, bring him back, bring him. Don't nobody want want Malik but us. Nobody want Malik but us. Uh, so I. So yeah, he he's a he's a guy that I don't I don't see hanging around. But Brian, let me ask you this, Brian. Mm-hmm. Out of the the um extra wide receiver guys, right? Ooh. Not Ooh. not Tolbert, not Brooks, not Lamb, of course, clearly. I think Brooks is safe as the 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 fourth guy. Yeah. Do you think Jalen Cropper kind of ran away with this thing as the as the the favorite for the last guy on the roster right now? Uh hold on one second here. I've got to I've got to do something here. Okay. I got to put this way. I got distracted there for a second. Okay, cool. What do you think? Ask me the question again because it's about it was about our uh, it was about our tackle. What and is we'll, okay? We'll okay. We'll do it. Uh, I'll, talk, I'll talk to you off air about it. Ah, oh, damn. All right. Uh, damn. All right. So, um, so, ask the question again. I'm sorry. I got. I was a distracted player there for a second. Got gotcha. you. Watch this. Brian brought us. Man, let me ask you this question, man. I was mm-hmm. man. I was watching the. I was watching the film, man, and you know. Where where are you where where are you with the current wide receiver race? Okay, yeah. we we know it's Lamb, Cooks, Tober, and I even think Brooks did well when yeah. Rush was out there throwing the football around, right? Catching all the high passes, extending, getting a little bit of yak, catching the ball short, getting some yak. Do you think Jalen Cropper separated himself from the rest of the field so far? Yeah, I, I do, I do, and this is going to be right now. Tolbert, Cooks. Turpin's in that mix right there for sure. sure. Just if you want to just, I'm just naming off the receivers. Sure. Uh, Brooks is in there. And I now I think that Cropper, Flournoy, that kind of thing, I I, I kind of feel like, I, I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. I hadn't seen anything from Kelvin Harmon. And yeah. the son of a gun made a couple of plays out there yesterday. Yeah, he's a... He's, uh... And I, I didn't, and, and it, it he... He is not. I I haven't noticed him all that much. I don't know. Maybe you're looking at clips. Maybe you've seen clips. I haven't I, seen I, anything. But he's, I have not. Yeah, he's PFF's third best offensive player or something like that. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, where, when? I haven't yeah. heard him. I didn't know he was here. Yeah. Well, that's what I. Billy Johnson. There were a couple times where Billy Johnson was open. They didn't give. They. I think that Cropper has moved ahead of Billy Johnson. Durden is trying to fight his way onto this thing. Mm. Uh, Flournoy, I think he had the he had the one drop yesterday or misplayed the ball. I think it's going to be tough for Burnett. I think it's going to be tough for Cam Johnson. I think it's going to be tough for Racy McMath. Harmon, uh, you know, he's a good size guy, but he hasn't done anything till yesterday. Now he comes out in the Raider game and has six catches or five catches and the next thing I'm like, well, okay, maybe I need to pay better attention to practice. Yeah. But I I kind of feel like that that Cropper has found a way on this football team and he might be the last guy. He might be the final one. You know, Cropper was able to make positives out of like bad things. So whenever Trey yeah. was like scrambling, he'll kind yeah. of run with him and get an easy catch. When Trey throws the ball behind him, you see Cropper reach behind him and make this 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 catch way behind him or whatever. So um, I think Cropper definitely uh, did a great job separating himself. Brian, let me ask you one last thing, man. I get this time has flown by. Um, I, I guess we just have fun here. This is just the, the the best show you do all day, Brian. Let me ask you this. Um, <laughs> I do a lot of them too. You damn right, you do. Yeah, Nealon. I I feel like he didn't. Wow. He did. I feel like he didn't play a whole bunch, but yeah. the, the little bit he did play, like the very fr- hold on, I got it pulled. Like the very first play of the game, yeah. I was like, all right, let's see what Mozzie doing. And it, look, Mozzie was solid, but Nealon ninety four on the on the right yeah. side of your screen, he, he he did he he did what what's on film. Like he did right. what he did at uh, Western Directional Michigan State. Uh, junior, uh, junior college or whatever, but tenacious run, run game guy, and right. you know, pass game they kind of got rid of the ball quick or whatever. I didn't see him yeah. do much in the pass rush department, but every time it was a run play, he was crashing everything towards, yeah, uh, towards the uh, towards the ball there, Brian. So, uh, what'd you uh, think of kneeling? Yeah, I, I, I think you, I thought you're spot on with the uh, with your eyes there, and 
this is, you know, Bobby Belt and I were talking about Love of the Star and just before I was doing the show with you today. And, um, you know, I, I told Bobby, I go, okay, depending on what you think about Parsons, do you think Parsons is an end or linebacker or whatever? But if you tell me for a guy for a base defensive end, it's my starter. It's yeah. my starter at right end. It's, it's going to be, you know, we'll see how the defensive tackle room plays out. Uh, but I, they, they moved. We saw some reps with Golston on the edge. Mm -hmm. We saw some reps with Fahoko on the edge. Mm -hmm. Um, so they're trying to kind of figure some things out, but I, I think that Nealon's the starter. Yeah. I think when we go to now Parsons could be okay. They could put Parsons hand down and he could be the guy. And I understand. But if you want to say true base type of defensive end or a guy that can play yeah. every snap, I think he, he might even get some look at nickel and in nickel inside at defensive tackle. That was something that he's done before. Sure. But, man, I his power, his quickness, there's a lot of positive things about his game. And, uh, man, he I feel like he's kind of gotten better every practice it's uh you know the pass rush stuff will still need work but it's it's not to the point where it's just rush down the middle rush down the middle rush down the middle and get killed yeah he's trying to get off blocks and trying to avoid blocks and try and break blockers down yeah and he's having some success doing it brian is there ever a reason why your three tech should be smaller than your right defensive end <laughs> is there is there ever a reason that should be a thing uh, there's, there's, you know, usually you could get a, if you get a three technique, that's really, really, really quick. You know, if you like, I, I remember, uh, you know, we've, who was my guy that, uh, that we had here forever. That was, uh, Crawford. Number nine, Crawford. no, 97, no, 90, 97, uh, uh, way before, way before your time. Why am I, why am I drawing a blank on my, on my guys here? But anyway, it, there was. There was uh, Leroy Glover. God oh, Leroy, bless Leroy, it, Brian. Yeah, Leroy, Leroy Glover. Leroy. I can remember Leroy, Leroy Glover, and he was one of the better players we ever had. Former Saint. Uh, former Saint, yeah. Yeah, Leroy Glover was kind of a smaller-looking guy, mm -hmm. but at three technique, but he was so quick. Yeah. And so, yeah, you could get away with the smaller three technique guy, but you're right about that. <laughs> I mean, you're like, you don't want a bunch of small guys playing inside like that, but – Leroy Glover was a, was a smaller guy. Uh, uh, you know, Jay Ratliff was sure. a smaller kind of guy that sure. played really, really well at the three techniques. So uh, those guys, you, you have to have some rare traits to be able to pull it off. But I do see your point there. One last thing. Uh, Hudgens did absolutely nothing, and I hate watching this film. Um, people actually got – they got mad at Mozzie because they 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 look they alike. He was fifty eight instead of sixty eight because they look alike and their jerseys look the same. People was mad at Mozzie. Huggins was so bad. Uh, Brian, do you think we quickly try to get some other tackle up here because I feel like Huggins I, came in to compete yeah. for for tackle a little bit, but yeah. on that same token, as bad as Huggins looked, Carl Davis and Justin Rogers were a tad bit better than I thought they were. Yeah, be. They, they, that that the the defensive tackles on tape. Those those three that you mentioned, the all the one technique guys uh, had their moments, yeah. uh, and and Rogers especially. Uh, the thing with Huggins, I I feel like that I'm going to give him, and I know this is you're going to give me the Phil Collins face here. I'm not even going to look. I'm not even going to look because I know Phil's about to hit me. I kind of feel like that maybe that with him being new to the new new to the team. That maybe that because I've seen him play with Atlanta and play better than that. He he was a better player yesterday. He wasn't a better player, but I'm I'm not even looking. I'm going to I'm going to give him this week, and if we see the same thing that happened this week happens next week, then you and I will circle back and you can continue to then put the glasses full up on your eyes and tell me that I'm need to do something else so that means he he shows up on his first day of work looking terrible and out of shape brown brother look i'm not gonna hit you with i the, just you know what i saw the kid play with atlanta yeah and he was starting and he wasn't terrible and i thought they maybe were bringing him in i yeah okay tonight's the night 
I, I feel like that maybe that he, maybe they were thinking about him playing as that, as a backup three. Yeah. And then they were able to move, but that, that plan might be just, that plan might be just out the window. I kind of like the look that they had where Rodgers was in B gap and Carl was at one. So maybe they can yeah. move Rodgers around. Like Rodgers I, yeah. is is heavy, but he moves pretty cool. Nimble. He's somewhat he, nimble. Yeah. Yeah. So, some, yeah. So, so, you know, maybe that's the reason why you would put uh, Rodgers as a three tech guy sometimes, yeah. you know? Yeah. Brian, man, I appreciate you for coming on the show, man. You know, one day we're going to get you in the Salt and Pepper Lounge and let you see what that's all about. I have heard some wonderful things about the Salt and Pepper Lounge. Oh, and uh, I would like to, I'm going to be a participant one day in the Salt and Pepper Lounge, but I want to be, I don't want to be in the actual show. I want to be on you. the side, like taking it all in from like everybody else. Because I got a tux. Yeah. I got a tux. I could drink scotch. You know, I could smoke a cigar. Mm. If you let me come to the Salt and Pepper Lounge, I promise you I'll get past the velvet ropes. My chat is so fun. We can't wait to set up the Salt and Pepper Lounge for you. We go, we, we're about to wipe off the tables and chairs now and get the get the dominoes and the liquor ready and the chicken there wings we go. ready. There we go. Uh, Good deal. Appreciate hey, we got a walk through tomorrow, man. Okay. We're, we're walking through, but let's talk about it. Let's okay. talk about some things. We got, hey, every day we can talk about football. Let's talk about football. We might know some things tomorrow, tomorrow about the uh, some injury stuff, and then and we'll see what this wide receiver uh, got coming. You know, this wide receiver is unsigned. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe okay. something. You well, never know. Brian, you have been a been a – blessing to all the youtube characters that are out here content oh, and and you know doing our thing man so i i'm just speaking for all of them you know will still jazz and everybody you you are you are doing fantastic work with us and we and we appreciate you being on the right side of history because we're gonna look back at all this and they're just gonna be like damn boy all them youtube characters they they all came from YouTube. Now they just tearing it up with yeah da 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 da. da. And you well, I yeah. I I appreciate every one of you. I, the hustle, the, the 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 desire to, you know, to to get the good content out there. Uh, yeah, I was on with Will today. I was been on with Jazz. Uh, I'm gonna join Will again in the morning. Uh, I had some technical problems here at uh, Oxnard where I had to kind of do it on the phone. So we're gonna do the face to face. He's got he's got a nice setup like you do too, you know, with all the bells and whistles. Better than mine, yeah. Yeah, he's he's got. So I I, I want to be a part of all those bells and whistles. Is what I want to do. Oh man, shouts out to Will Steel. When you're yeah. on his show, you just end up hating my show. You end up hating. Oh no, man, Chris. hey, I, who always, I always come back at the end of the day. I yeah. did. I've done six shows today, and you're my my last one. Save the, best I, for last. save the best for save last. Save the best for the last. All right, man. Get you a nap, Brian Bryce. We appreciate you. Y'all tap Thank in you. with him on Twitter, B R Y N Brothers. Y'all follow me because I'm trying to get my, my followers up and y'all sub because I'm trying to get to 100,000 by the end of the football season. Appreciate you. Let's go. And um, we'll tap in with y'all tomorrow. Y'all hold it down for the Doski Woski. Peace. Crown.